This is John Michael Grogan with Advancing Your World. Today I would like to share with you the seven deadly curses and blessings. Dr. John Michael Grogan is a worldwide best-selling author and speaker. In this podcast, Advancing Your World, Dr. John Michael will help you position yourself for success by achieving greater purpose, significance, and exceptionalism. Now, here's Dr. John Michael Grogan. One of my favorite pieces of advice is from an African proverb. The one who will not listen crosses a river of crocodiles in a clay boat. When we are forewarned, we are then forearmed. Be wary of clay boats and rivers full of crocodiles. Everyone must choose one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The weightlifter knows the pain of discipline. The one who chops wood, for example, knows the pain of endurance, but they are three times warmed. They are warm chopping the wood, they are warm carrying the wood to the fireplace, and finally they are warmed by the fire. Conversely, those who fail to chop the wood feel the pain of regret, coldness. Life, as we have said in the past, is all about choices. Wise choices lead to a life of peace and joy. Poor choices lead to a life of regret. In a time long since past, there was a story from North American Indian folklore about a white dog and a black dog. These dogs live within each of us. You've probably heard this story before. The Indians would pass this down to the next generation, the children. The white dog grows the positive within a person, draws one closer to God or the Great Spirit, as the Indians called him. The black dog, of course, is conversed to the white dog. We all have a white dog and a black dog that can manifest themselves in us. These two dogs are constantly fighting to see who will establish dominance. We will feed one or the other of these dogs. The dominant one will show up in our actions, the words we use, what resides in our hearts and minds. The black dog brings with it curses. We don't use the unpleasant word sin today. For as Baroness Stocks said, we call it self-expression today. Well, here are seven deadly sins that bring on the curses. Lust. Lust is an intense desire or need for sex. Someone said that lust appeals to an empty heart but we can surely lust after other things as well. The second one is pride. Pride is described as an inordinate amount of self-esteem. It's a haughty spirit that looks down on others. As lust indicates an empty heart, pride appeals to an empty head. A prideful person takes themselves much too seriously. Gluttony. This is, as we know, involves overeating. When Orson Welles, actor and director extraordinaire, was told by his doctors when he swelled to over 300 pounds that if he was going to have a dinner for four, that he should invite three other people. Some people eat to live. The glutton lives to eat. Greed There are three things that are never satisfied, and a fourth that never says enough. A barren womb. Those who have gone through the heartbreak of infertility know the pain of never having a child. A land without rain. Fire and hell. Laziness is another one of these curses. This person is uh, disinclined to exertion. Their modus operandi 
is to get by with the least amount of discredit. Wrath. This person is held captive in his or her anger. It's one small step from anger to hate. Hate wears you down and does not hurt your adversary. It's a little like taking poison and wishing your enemy would die. Growing old is inevitable. Growing up is optional. Envy is another one of these curses. Envy is the resentment or jealousy of what another person has. This transgression is like a cancer and will eat us from the inside out. It's a sprint to self-destruction. For every malady, there seems to be a cure. The blessings counteract the curses by having an opposing force or effect. What we are striving for should be a balance to equalize and nullify the negative forces in our lives. By the way, in the Greek, sin means missing the mark. No conflict is so severe, Thomas Akempis said, as his who labors to subdue himself. Actually, there are over 30,000 blessings in the Bible. So restricted by time here, let's cover some of the major ones. One of the most difficult to come to a resolution with is tithing. It is wise to remember that we can't outgive God. God doesn't need our money. Giving a tithe is for us. It's a discipline, a submission. But God has a wonderful ROI, a return on investment. It is the only place in the Bible where he offers us to challenge him. But our motives must be pure. You can't just give to get. God isn't some kind of vending machine in the sky. Another great promise is when King David is coming to the end of his life. He says this, I once was a young man, and now I am an old man, and never have I seen my offspring begging in the streets. This is a promise of God's provision. Other promises would influence wealth, blessings upon our home, our children, our work and ventures, the power to persevere. Blessings are to those who fear the Lord. Fear, in this instance, means respect for. Then there is the matter of how God increases. He pays back in folds and not percentages. A 10% return on your efforts, for example, would be a thousand-fold, a thousand times more. You calculate by multiplying the percentage by 100. So a 40% increase times 100 would equal 4,000-fold. All of this comes down to trust in the Lord. The question isn't, can we? The question really is, will we? Non legitimus carborundum. Until next time, this is John Michael Grogan saying, be strong, be bold, be courageous. Sign up for exclusive access to Dr. Grogan's newsletter, and as an added bonus, you'll receive access to the growth chart that Dr. Grogan talks about in the podcast, Majoring in the Majors. Visit johnmgrogan.com and sign up today. That's johnmgrogan.com. And don't forget, subscribe to Advancing Your World on your favorite podcast app.